Hey guys, uh, this is Random Math Sync, and today we're going to be proving um, two different theorems, kind of, about um, Mersenne primes. The first one we're going to prove is just about the definition of Mersenne prime that if 2 to the power of n minus 1 is a prime number, then n must be a prime number because we know that Mersenne primes is written in this form and n must be a prime number. I mean, even if n is a prime number, um, then 2n minus 1 is not necessarily always going to be a Mersenne prime, but, um, but if this is a prime number, then n must be a, um, a prime number. So we're going to prove that why this is. So um, I'm going to start by um, doing something. We're going to, rather than proving that n must be prime, we're going to assume that n isn't prime. So um, let's assume that n is composite, which means it's not a prime number. And um, by doing this, we're going to let um, the number n, this n, equal two, two numbers multiplying each other. We're going to call them a and b. So that a and b, none of them, none of them is 1, right? So um, a isn't 1, b isn't 1. By letting this, we, we, we meet, we're making n a, um, a composite number. So we can rewrite this, the Mersenne, um, or not really Mersenne, we can rewrite that bit as 2 um, to the power of a, b minus 1. Now, but we can prove that this wouldn't be a, uh, a prime number by finding two things that will factorize this, will, that will multiply to give this. So this is what it is. So I'm going to um, take out a 2a to the power of a minus 1. And what fills this bracket? This is what fills this bracket, right? Um, this. So it's going to be 2 to the power of a, inside the bracket we're going to have b minus 1, plus 2 to the power of a times b minus 2, all the way down until the whole thing in the bracket becomes 1 and then becomes 0. So then becomes 2 to the power of a times 1, um, which is just going to be 2 to the power of a, plus 2 to the power of a times 0. a times 0 is going to be 0, because 0 times anything is 0, and anything to the power of 0 will give 1. So it's, we're just going to write that as 1. Right? Um, I'll make a little mark there. That, that bit will be um, 2 times a times 1, and that bit is 2 times a to the power of a times 0, which equals to 2 to the power of 0, which equals 2, 1. So B will go down to ascending order until we reach that. Right. Um, oh, I forgot to close the bracket. Now um, we will multiply the whole thing out. Right. Um, we need to know a little rule of indices, which I'll write in the other corner. Um, that if we have, we, we just have any number. So I'm going to call the number X. Right. To the power of anything, pretty much anything as well. Let's say P and Q. X to the power of P times X to the power of Q. You might know this already. Um, this will equal to um, X times X to the power of P plus Q. When, you add, when you're doing this, you just simply add the um, indices together. So, so knowing this, we could apply it to when we're multiplying this bit out. So um, I'm going to first multiply out the 2 to the power of a with everything else. So that will equal 2. Um, so we add the indices because the base is the same. That's important. We couldn't just simply add anything. The base must be the same. But for this case, the base is the same. So we go we get 2 to the power of a plus a times b minus 1. We'll write, write the whole thing out. We'll, um, we'll sort it out later on. Um, this, a plus a to the power of b minus 1. Plus the next bit, which is going to be a plus that. a plus a times b minus 2, etc., 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 until we get um, 2a plus a would be 2 
two a because a plus a is that we I just kind of did it for you, and then we get a plus zero a plus zero is nothing, so we would just simply add. Um, you just write two a, and also because two a times one will just be the same thing. Now we will multiply out the minus one bit, right? Um, I'll put I'll put it down here, okay. Um, minus, we're going to write minus, um, minus 1 times that is going to be just simply minus um, a b minus 1 um, plus the next one which is going to, oh sorry not plus, minus um, 2 a b to the minus 2 and then so on, so on, so on. We have stuff in between here, which I'm not going to actually write out. And then minus 2a minus 1. Okay, now um, let's try to. Um, I'm going to take. I'm going to take the indices of two of them. I'm going to take. I'm going to take. Let's try to check that indices first. We if we can simplify that bit. Um, a plus a plus um, a b minus 1. We multiply this out, so we go multiply those bits so we get a plus a b minus a because so we take a times b then we take a times minus one these two a's cancel them out so we just get a b so this really is just will just equal two to the power of a b then we'll check the next one right um so we get so a plus plus a b minus 2 um, right we're going to again multiply them out so we get a plus a b minus 2a which equal um, a minus 2a gives minus a because it's the same a so we could do that with it a b minus a these two subtract each other if we factorize that, we get a times b minus 1. We can take out common a between the two, and we get that. But a times b minus 1 is that. So basically, these are these indices are basically the same thing. They're equal. So that means one of them is adding that certain indice, and the other one is subtracting that certain the same number. So basically, what we get here is we just cancel those two out. And once again, for these 2a, we also cancel out. And if we actually do more of these, which I didn't actually do, you'll find that this one will also cancel with the next term that you will expand when you expand this. So actually this will cancel out and so will this. So what we're left with, um, in, what we're left with is this, which is 2AB minus one, which doesn't cancel with anything. So we can bring that minus one here, we get minus one. This matches with um, what we had earlier. This bit matches with this, which is what we um, simply just expanded. So that means that this will factorize out nicely into two brackets, into two things. And because it factorizes, that means that 2AB minus 1 is not a prime number because there will be two numbers that will divide into it that is not itself or 1. And so because of this property here, then we know that n, um, if n is composite, then this cannot be a prime number. So that means, by using the kind of reverse argument, if 2n, 2 to the power of n minus 1 is prime, then n must be prime. It will not be a composite number. Okay, now we look at our second um, figure of kind of, it's about, it's involving perfect numbers now. Um, it says that if this, if 2n minus 1, a uh, number of this form is a Mersenne prime, then this is going to be a perfect number. So I'm going to actually note these. So I'm going to call this uh, Mersenne prime with the n Mersenne prime. It's not going to be the nth one. And I'm going to call this perfect pn just for notation so it's a bit easier later on so before before I even get into the um, algebra kind of I'm going to um, do this with 
actual numbers first. So once I get into um, the algebra, I, we kind of know what we're talking about. So I'm going to take um, I'm going to take n to equal three first. So n equals three, and um, the Messine prime three will equal um, two to the power of three minus one is seven. Seven is the Messine prime, and the perfect number that comes with this Messine prime, the perfect P3 um, will is going to equal to um, 7. I'm not, um, it's going to be, n is going to be 3 there, so it's going to be 2 to the power of 3 minus 1, so 2 to the power of 2 is 4 times the Messine bit, which is going to be 7, which equals 28. 28 is a um, perfect number. So, perfect number is a number where all its factor but itself adds up to give itself. So the factors of 28, not counting 28 itself, will give 28. So if you do count 28, if you actually add up all of the factors of 28, including itself, you would get double of this because you get one time of yourself plus another one of yourself, so you would get 56. So let's list out all the factors of 28. So first we look at the factors of 4. So the factors of 4 I'm going to write it here, factors. So the factors of 4 are going to be 1, 2, and 4. It's going to be powers, 2 to the power of 0, 2 to the power of 1, 2 to the power of 2. Right. Um, now you can see here that if a number divides into 4, then when you multiply by 7, it doesn't matter if you multiply by 7, it, you multiply the 4 by 7, it will still divide into the, the number, these factors that divide into 4 will still divide into 4 times 7. Right, um, and you can also see that other factors of 28 will be 1 times 7, um, which will be 7, 2 times 7, which will be 14, and 4 times 7, which obviously equals 28. Now if you add up all these factors, if I'm going to add up these factors, I will get 7. 7, which is going to be the Racine prime, just in case you were wondering. Um, and you add this bit up, you get 49. If you add those two up, um, 7 plus 49, you get 56, which equals the double of 28, which is what we kind of said earlier. So. Um, if you don't count one of the 28, so you don't count this 28, all the factors, the other five factors, will add up to 28, which means 28 is going to be a perfect number. Now enough with that bit of BSing around and all those stuff. Now we look at it in algebraic terms. We're going to not actually use numbers. We're actually going to be using letters and those types of stuff. So, um, yeah, let's... It's kind of, I'm going to kind of write this here now. So, yeah, obviously um, we have MN and we have PN. So I'm going to just rewrite it here. So MN is going to be 2N minus 1. PN will be 2 minus 1, 2N minus 1. So first of all, we look at the factors of... Um, the, we can have to look at the factors of the perfect number, which we can look at the factors of those, right? Right. Um, so let's. So first of all, we look at the factors of this bit, like what we did with the um, four times seven. We actually looked at the force factor first. We look at the factors of two to to the power of n minus one. So what do we have? We have two to the power of zero, uh, which is one, because one is factor to pretty much every whole number. So then apart from 1, um, we got we 2 to the power of 1, we also have 2 to the power of 2, etc. until um, 2 to the power of n minus 1 itself, 2 to the power of n minus 1. Now once again we can take this and we can multiply it by this bit um, like what we did there. So um, we will do, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do it like this, so that going to be just 2 to the power of 0, 2 to the power of 1, as a 2 power of n minus 1, all of this instead times by um, 2 to the power of n minus 1. 
power of n minus 1, power of n minus 1. Right. So now we can add up um, all the factors like we did previously. Now, if you were to add up all the factors, um, you will get the, um, the perfect number times 2. So um, the sum of the factors that we expect, I'm going to write here, um, sum of the factors you would expect would equal to 2 times um, 2 to the power of n minus 1 times 2n minus 1. Oops, I didn't realize that's actually off screen. Um, okay, there we go. We're, we're, okay, you we can see this now. Um, so the factor would be 2 times the um, perfect number because that's what a perfect number kind of is. Right, um, now let's look at this bit for a second. Um, we see this this bit, which is 2 times 2 to the power of n minus 1. It's in the same base, so we could do what we did previously with the indices rule. This is 2 to the power of 1, so um, when you have two um, numbers with the same base multiplying by each other, we just simply add the indices. So 1 plus n minus 1, 1 cancels each other out, so what we get is just simply 2 to the power of n times um, 2n minus 1. So if we get that when you do it here, then we kind of prove that. We prove that um, perfect numbers factors will add up to um, itself, um, double of itself, actually. So if you add this, you will get an answer, which is 2 to the power of n minus 1. You can look at it from here, that when you add 1, um, 2 to the power of 0, 2 to the power of 1, until 2 to the power of n minus 1, you get 2 to the power of n minus 1. 2 to the power of n minus 1. This one, which is different from this. This is actually a 2 to the power of n minus 1, like, you know what I mean, right? Um, yeah, you can, you can figure that out. So, and then when you try to add all these up, you would get um, this kind of the same thing, which is 2 to the power of n minus 1, um, but then you would have, still have to multiply the extra to the power of n minus 1, power of n minus 1 there. Now, these are the, all the factors of um, this bit. If this bit were to be a perfect number, if this bit was to be a Mersenne prime. Now, just to, I'm just going to point this out that if this bit, if the 2 to the power of n minus 1, this bit were to be a Mersenne prime, then there would have been extra factors. There would have just been one of these factors. It was like this case, if um, the um, Mersenne prime was not a Mersenne prime, was something else like 15, then you know, we wouldn't, it wouldn't just be multiplying by 15 to get all the other factors. You have to multiply by 3, then multiply by 5, and then we would actually have, end up with more factors. So it wouldn't have been a perfect number. But for this case, we only have, you know, one factors. So now we have to add them up. How do we add them up? Well, um, as you can see, we have both of these. We have a common 2 to the power of n minus 1. So we can take one of those out. So we have um, 2 to the power of... Um, power of n minus 1 for both sides. Um, then what? Then we have the, um, then we take it out because this is actually 1 times 2 power of n minus 1. So we're going to have 1 plus um, 2 power of n minus 1, the extra bit here. And as you can see, and as you probably have already guessed, um, these 1 and minus 1 cancels, so what you get, you will simply equal this answer, there. So there it is, we've proved that all the factors of this, if this bit were to be a Mersenne prime, will equal the perfect number doubled, because, you know, we have the factor of the perfect number itself. So that is the proof that, um, if 2 to the power of n minus 1 is a machine prime, then that will have to be a prime number. And here, this is Random Math Sync, and thank you very much for watching my video, and I'll see you again soon. Goodbye.